Homo sapiens means wise human, but does that name really suit us? Maybe it did once, but now perhaps a better name would be Homo absurdus. After all, don't we spend our entire lives trying to convince ourselves that our existence isn't absurd? Darwinian selection equipped us with a mind like no other creature, but absurdly, one that refuses to be what it is. Unlike other animals, we have a primal impulse to view our existence as having two components, not just a material life, the physical body, but also a distinct and separate mental life, the inner self. It's the mental life of self that gives us a sense of who and what we really are, represented by our individual thoughts, memories, ideas, values, beliefs, attitudes, feelings, intentions, knowledge, skills, virtues and aspirations. But material and mental life do not literally exist separately. Mental life is just one of the remarkable things that the physical brain generates using the energy and materials of physics and chemistry. Our instinct to think of it as having a separate existence is just a delusion, but ironically one that rewarded the reproductive success of our ancestors. This separate sense of self enabled us to attribute mental states not just to ourselves, but also to distinguish them from the mental states of others. And from this, together with capacity for complex language, we evolved a social intelligence, cooperative culture and technological prowess that fueled the relentless march of human progress. Also, unlike other animals, we know that our physical body will age and die. We mostly understand the need to accept the inevitability of this, but at the same time we have nagging concerns that our inner self will also cease to exist when the body does, and this, for most of us, is utterly unacceptable. We are afflicted, therefore, with self-impermanence anxiety, the worry that death inevitably annihilates all that we do and all that we are, that it will be as though we never existed at all. Natural selection, however, also gave our ancestors primal impulses that served to buffer the worry of self-impermanence. These involve two novel and uniquely human fundamental drives, extension of self and escape from self. Extension of self, or legacy drive, is a deeply ingrained motivation to leave something of oneself that will persist after death. This delusion may manifest through having children, who we instinctively assume will mirror our defining characteristics through chasing fame and recognition, or by belonging to something larger than self, like religion, political ideology, or even a fan group for a sports team. Escape from self, or leisure drive, is entirely different. This pursuit serves to arrest the mind firmly in the immediate present by deploying triggers for pleasure, thus temporarily but effectively shielding the mind from the worry that future death will also bring the end of self. Many of our cultural norms exist purely to satisfy our intrinsic striving for these delusions and distractions. By mitigating the worry of self-impermanence, strong selection for these drives propelled copies of our ancestors' genes into future generations. The problem is that self-impermanence anxiety has always lurked stubbornly beneath the surface, and so natural selection for ever stronger drives, to work harder and play harder, has ramped up in momentum like a runaway train. And the consequences are dire. There are too many people using too much stuff and we are trashing the planet. Our modern civilization is now on the brink of global collapse. Biodiversity is being decimated. We're losing species 1,000 times faster than the historical rate of extinction. Climate change and land degradation threaten the livelihoods of billions of people. And our evolved psychology is breeding an escalation of human despair, with increasing incidences of anxiety disorders, depression and suicide. It has become more and more difficult for cultural products and institutions to keep up with and satisfy an ever-increasing demand for newer and more effective anxiety-buffering delusions and distractions. What can we do to halt the path of destruction and misery that our species has embarked upon? We must find ways to design a humanistic project of civilization, grounded in a cultural evolution that espouses confidence that our existence need not be absurd. We can do this by embracing, with empathy, our uniquely human need to buffer self-impermanence anxiety, but achieving this with domains for legacy and leisure that respect and protect the ecosystem of our planet. This is a tall order, but we can begin by building a deeper and more broadly public understanding of what we are, and this requires understanding where we came from.